Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, I hope you're doing well at this point in time. And, and I guess one of, the, one of the things that we're going to be trying to focus on this time around is with, with someone I've known for a number of years uh, who, has, um, who has spent a great deal of time, if you will, uh, i.e. basically getting people of color and others, for that matter, from a political landscape, um, sort of an education and um, I'm, I'm being sort of short about this particular piece because I want to make sure that we spend enough time with Mr. Calvin Henry. Calvin, who happens to be the president of Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs, uh, is with me today. And we're going to focus uh, on something that, in all due respect, should, that, that you should have seen either in high school or, or if, you, if you will, in your civic class and the like. It's called the Constitution of the United States. You might have, I think, Don, you already got that right. Okay, fine. That was showing up there right at the front of the deal. Right? But anyway, there was a little issue here in regard, there was a, actually it's a major issue that has come up in regards to the Constitution of the United States. And uh, President Henry, if you will, of the, of the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs will spend some time with me on this particular issue and, uh, and sort of give you a feel and bring it, bring it home to Oregon for that matter because he, he's also uh, basically a, approached the Attorney General Jim, Jim, General Holder, if you will, you know, who happened to be the Attorney General of these United States. And uh, so anyway, uh, Cal's gonna give us a, a better feel of what that's all about. But before we go into that, what I'd like to do is uh, spend some time uh, with Mr. Henry and talk to the origin, if you will, of the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. I think it's very important to get a, a better feel of, of the efforts and the work that uh, has gone, gone by, if you will, of, uh, of uh, putting together the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. And so with that, Count, welcome to the Oregon Voters Digest. Well, thank you very much, Bruce, for Appreciate inviting you. me to come here and share a perspective with you and, and the people in the community. I hope that uh, we will all gain some understanding of what we must do as people or as citizens of the United States to protect the United States from uh, something that the organism Black Affairs has seen. Great. I might add, too, that uh, the, last, uh, the last appearance of uh, Mr. Henry uh, was with uh, uh, former Governor Vicatia. Remember that one? Yes, I do. Yeah, it was with Vic, Governor Vicar Tia, and, and Vic is a close friend, a good friend, if you will, of, yes. of, uh, of, of the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs and, and Mr. Henry. And at one point in time, he was an employer of Mr. Henry. No, I, I worked for well, the, he was the governor. He, right. was the governor. he was the governor. That's what well, I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I worked kinda, for the Secretary of State. He worked for the Secretary of State, who, uh, who actually worked with the for the governor. We're with the governor. With the governor. Oh, with the governor, not for the governor. No, because they're independently elected. Oh, is that right? Okay. Okay. All right. I'll, 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 I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But look, why don't we first start off, like I said, uh, let's educate the, uh, the, the viewing audience as to what is the, what was the origin of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs? Um, why, 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 why an organization like this, and, and what benefits does it give, if you will, Oregonians? Well, when the, organiz uh, when the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs was, ex was founded in 1977, it was founded with the, with the notion that black Oregonians need to help share with the people of Oregon some of its issues, and we spent time trying to develop those issues. We knew that uh, blacks in the state of Oregon, black Oregonians, had a very limit, limited voice. And our effort was to give them a better voice with uh, elected officials, with appoint, uh, appointed officials, and, and also carrying their issues to the public so that the public can be aware of what those issues. How'd you go about doing that? We went through about uh, uh, holding uh, uh, seminars and holding uh, uh, conferences, and we also held a political convention that we established some platforms of issues uh, that was uh, uh, that affected the black community. And we also knew whatever we did to improve the status of blacks in Oregon benefit everybody in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And we knew that uh, we needed to share another perspective about what was going on in the state of Oregon as well as around the country so that other people can get another view of the perspective that uh, a different uh, racial grouping had mm -hmm. about the issues that affected us mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a people, as a community, and as a nation. And oftentimes people saw 
whites in general have had a limited view of how blacks are thinking about some of the issues that are confronted, that we are faced with day to day. And it's almost as if we had no issues at all. Mm -hmm. And when people understand that our issues are no different than their issues, and that we necessarily have to work together to make things work, it makes a big difference. And the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs have been you, doing that. You know, one of the one of the major contributions that I'm very familiar with, with reference to the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, are those, those candidates' fairs that you had uh, around the state, for that matter, in various parts of the state. Yes. And everyone was invited, and, and practically 90, 90 to 100 percent showed up. Well, yes, they, they did show at the convention because they wanted the endorsement that we mm -hmm. can do. See, the endorsement was not just for black people, it was for all the people of Oregon because people want to know that candidates didn't mind representing black people as well as white people in the state of Oregon. Some, some people feel that they don't have to represent black people. They don't have to address those issues. And uh, we, we recently had uh, 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 a membership meeting in, in Portland here where that we invited uh, all the candidates that was running to replace the U.S. Representative David Wu's seat. And uh, I think 10 of those individuals show, showed up, and three of them felt in some ways that it wasn't important for them to show up. Mm -hmm. But I think people- Was that an endorsement? That, that no, there's, there was no endorsement given that, but, but they needed to understand that blacks were concerned about what was happening with regard to the United States Rep House of Representatives. And we needed to make sure that we had uh, uh, individuals uh, who wanted to become representative, who didn't mind working on behalf of the people of Oregon and be willing to work with the President of the United States to meet the needs of all the citizens of the country. From, but from an African-American perspective, at this, at, at this, at this so-called get-together, get if you will, for, for that particular seat, was there any specific, can you maybe cite maybe one or two specifics uh, that you might have, that, 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 that were asked, if you will, to well, address? Well, I, you know, uh, one of the questions that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs wanted, to, wanted the individuals there to ask was, uh, had any of those individuals signed a pledge that they would not, uh, th they would not uh, increase taxes for anything in the state in the, in the country? See, when people jump up and and do such a thing, and they take an oath to represent the people of, of the state of Oregon, the people of the United States, in our view, you're violating your oath of office. Mm -hmm. The only oath of office that individuals should to sign. And, and, and be willing to sustain is the oath that they take as an officer of the United States or the officer of the state of Oregon or the city of Portland or any other city or any other political subdivision. But when people go outside of that, it makes our, our democracy seem very weak and seem uh, immaterial to a lot of people. And oftentimes we run into that issue. And uh, one of the things that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs wanted to be sure of that at least people know that these individuals have or have not signed a pledge to do something other than what their, their, their oath of office called for them to do. Okay. Okay. And see, that is the key problem that, uh, that we are facing with today in terms of the constitutional crisis that this country find itself in. Right. And we'll, wanna, we'll wanna, get into that yeah, a little later. Yeah. But, but, it, but the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs want the people of Oregon to understand that we have a big problem that we necessarily need to deal with. If we're going to get somewhere as a people or as a nation, we have to begin to hold our public elected officials as well as appointed officials accountable for un, uh, upholding their oath of office. You know, the other thing I would I would make note to the viewing audience also too, that it is still a, a diverse group. You know, it's not just limited to African Americans being. A well, no, we have we have. The, the, anyone who believes in what the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is doing, it can be a member of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. There are white members. There's also uh, Hispanics and uh, others uh, involved in the process. And our point is that uh, we, we, our primary mode is to improve the status of blacks in Oregon. But we also reach out and help others at the same time. We have spent a great deal helping other people. Uh, find lawyers and working with those lawyers to, to meet their needs and uh, their community needs. And so it's not just for, uh, uh, our, our effort is not just only with black 
Aldonia, but it's in, uh, with all the other groups as well. All right, good. All right, I think that sort of gives you sort of a feel for um, uh, one, the, the focus of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs to its president, uh, uh, Mr. Calvin Henry. And so what we'll do now is that we'll sort of go get into an area that, that is of, 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 uh, of primary interest, if you will, with the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, and that in regards to the Constitution of the United States. I, and, uh, that, and we're going to talk to that. And, and what I would like to do is that uh, the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs went out with a statement, in fact, a, uh, a, a sort of a, a statement as to their concern with reference to the Constitution of the United States. And what I plan to do now is that I'm going to read you the first paragraph, which I think will then that will get, in, get us into the conversation that we would like to, and, and we'll uh, then give uh, uh, Mr. Henry, the president, the president here of Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, to give you a better feel as to their rationale as far as taking interest in this particular subject matter as it relates to the Constitution of the United States. And, it, and, and I quote, and by the way, this, this particular letter was sent uh, July 25th, 2011, to Attorney General Eric Holder, U.S. Department of Justice, okay, and, in, and, and basically it says, the first paragraph, I write to you because there is a United States constitutional problem that is brewing out of proportion and because this crisis over the increase of U.S. public debt limit is being used to camouflage this constitutional problem. When 274 of 289 Republican members of the U.S. Congress sign a pledge and agree to act as one to not faithfully discharge the duties of their offices in violation of their congressional oaths of office in their efforts to get the people to blame the U.S. president for the failure of government. This is a U.S. constitutional crisis. Also, the crisis over increasing the U.S. public debt limit seems to be reflecting an open conspiracy to overthrow the Constitution of the United States because a black man is president of the United States. That's quite a bit said in that one paragraph. It is. What does it mean? Well, let's see, see, ever since uh, President uh, Obama has been president of the United States, there's been an effort of individuals to uh, to say they want to see him fail. And some have gone widely to say it in different kinds of ways. And we've had members of Congress to make that, ac- that, that statement. They want him to fail. See, when people see and understand the Constitution of the United States, they will re- if they read it, they will see that the embodiment of the United States is vested in the President of the United States. And a lot of times, there are many people, there are many white people in the country who uh, maybe be upset with this notion that a black man is president of the United States. And we need to talk about that, and we need to get it out in the open so that people can deal with this issue, rather than let somebody come along and feel that it is only because of some political uh, uh, forest about it. And I use the word forest because oftentimes, we don't use political in the same way that we ought to be using it as a way of influence and bringing about change. And we want to look at it in terms of, uh, we, we want to see a, repos- uh, a, a Democrat and a Republican out there. And we want to look at it in that, to- that term. Now, when people are elected to office, they, are, uh, they may, the way they get there may be the way their party structure have be- allowed them to be able to get there. But once when they become a United States Senator or a United States Representative, uh, they are no longer a Democratic representative or a Republican representative. Or president, right? Or president. Okay. They represent the whole nation, mm-hmm. and they should act accordingly. They have taken an oath to uh, uphold, uh, uh, to support and, 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 and defend the Constitution of the United States. But when you see them up there looking and say, I will take an oath from an, uh, a pledge from another person to tell, uh, to tell me what to do, and, and, and they use that as the basis for their function, which should allow them to, dis, to not carry out the duties in which they were well, tell elected me, Cam, to, to, when, to When they're uh, elected to office, don't they take this oath? They take, a, they, they they, they take, take an seat? oath. They take an oath to, uh, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That's what they take the oath for. Now, the president take an oath to uh, protect, defend, and, uh, and uh, 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 he take an oath to protect 
and defend and uphold it. The, the Constitution, Constitution right? in the, uh, of the United States. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different. One, his is a 